let's start working on the concept of perfect competition in this video and now we're gonna discuss when it's worth for a company to stay in the market so when is it worth to operate that's our goal for this video and we'll do it on this graph with this example so suppose we have apples in the market that we sell and one thing about perfect competition that we know is that the price is the same so we cannot alter the price because everyone's selling the same product and in the case of apples that's quite realistic because indeed if we go to a regular market there can be 10 people standing in a row they sell the same apples for the same price so that's going to be a quite accurate example so suppose the price in the market is going to be five dollars per kilo for the apples so we have it here with this green line and i also plotted here this purple marginal cost uh, curve and the average variable cost curve now one more thing to keep in mind when we're gonna discuss about competition both here and in monopoly and overall in microeconomics we're gonna discuss how it affects economic profit so we're gonna think about economic profits and I'm gonna write the difference between economic profits and business profits or accounting profits, so to speak I'm gonna write this equation here and keep it in mind all the time so when we speak about economic profit we're speaking about the difference between accounting profit and the opportunity cost so that's what we're referring to what is accounting profit accounting profit is the actual money that we keep in our pocket that's the business result that's what's coming from our business from selling apples the opportunity cost is our next best choice next best alternative so that's gonna be our alternative option the economic profit is the difference between them meaning that if we want to maximize if we want to maximize economic profit we would like to have as much as possible of an accounting profit because the opportunity cost stays the same it's it's uh, fixed the opportunity cost is whatever it is if we instead of selling apples we could sell bananas whatever profit we would have from selling bananas that would be the opportunity cost but we cannot go into the banana market and try to maximize that profit because by definition we're working in the apples market so we're trying to maximize this accounting profit this business profit from selling the apples but by doing so, we can see on this equation, very simple, that we're trying to actually improve our economic profit at the same time. So they are one and the same, except that the economic profit takes into account the opportunity cost. And the reason that it takes into account is because it's always wise to compare what we're doing to what we could be doing. Are we investing the dollars in the right place? Are we making the most money? What happens if we have still positive accounting profit, but negative um, economic profit? Well. If we do the math, that would just mean that we can still have a positive accounting profit, but then our opportunity cost would be even higher. Opportunity cost would be even higher than that. And if we take the difference, that would be an, a negative result. So there you go, a definition of negative economic profit. It doesn't mean that we're losing money in our business. It just means that we're not doing the best that we can with the dollars that we have. So we should be operating in a different market. That's the whole notion of economic profit. So keep it always in mind. It's about doing our best with what we have at the moment compared to the alternative now we have this condition for the market that if we want to operate we must compensate the average variable cost so the criteria that we have is going to be that the price must be greater than the average variable cost and notice that i'm saying greater not greater than or equal to why is that the case well look when the price is greater than the average variable cost we are compensating we are recovering our average variable cost but recall that we also have fixed costs and the reason this is worth doing the reason this is worth doing is because in expectation later on while we're in business we're going to recover the fixed cost as well so let's write it here like that in the short run price would be greater than the average variable cost we can still have negative profits at the moment we can still have losses right temporarily but in the long run we do so with the purpose that in the long run by compensating the average variable cost we're also going to cover our fixed costs and once we cover all the costs we're actually going to have positive economic profits so we will have positive economic profits in the long run that's the whole idea about being in the market we sacrifice something in the short run and it's usually very typical for brick and mortar businesses that have to invest in their facility in their buildings and so on they are having a negative uh, profit in the beginning in the short run but because they're at least compensating the average variable cost the price per unit compensates what is variable the by, by definition that means that the only thing that's left to compensate to cover is the fixed cost and we can do so in the long run because we have profit accumulating from this uh, sales right the profit per unit because the price is going to be higher than the average variable cost 
the markup that we're having from here, this markup that we're going to have from here is going to be used to cover the fixed costs and eventually that's going to lead to a positive economic profit later on in the business because we are going to have a maximum accounting profit and that's going to also be better than our best alternative. Hope this makes sense. Now, one more thing I'm going to touch briefly is this. We cannot go higher than the marginal cost per unit. So the, the best that we can do to maximize profit is that we want to make price equals to marginal cost. And we're going to prove it also on the graph why this is the case. First of all, let's see what happens if we go above marginal cost. Well, by definition, if we go in this region above marginal cost in terms of production, so we go from here, from this amount of apples, let's say we're selling here 7 kilos of apples, and we want to sell 8 now, well, the additional cost from selling that kilo of apple is higher than $5. So by definition, it means that we're losing money on it, and that's not worth it. And we know in microeconomics that decisions are made on marginal calculations at the margin for the additional unit what happens not in total so that's one part of the argument and the same logic goes here what if we're below the, the price level in terms of our marginal cost same logic goes that by definition that means we have room for improvement we have room to exploit profits because our price is still compensating the marginal cost it's worth for us still selling and when we're at this intersection point that's that's where we should stop that's the best where we can be because later on as we've just said we are starting to lose money on it and that's it that's that's the highlight of operating in the market hope this makes sense in the next video we're going to discuss short run after that long run